they were prepared to risk everything. In the years following the Vietnam War, over one million people escaped by way of the sea. They took to the ocean in tiny overcrowded ships and were dubbed the boat people. A very hard decision because we know the dangerous and, and I accepted. I decided to go and we left in 1980 and then for three days, four nights, we at sea and it's was dangerous, terrible, big waves, uh, hungry, no water. Seven months later, Kim and her sister arrived safely in Canada. But Kim still had to overcome many hurdles. She didn't speak English, and childhood polio left her with limited mobility in her hand. Her disability ruled out factory work, and without English, her communication skills were limited. Even though she had a financial accounting background, she feared she would never find employment in Canada. Fortunately, Kim found the Toronto Office Skills Training Project. Kim was one of the first four women ever to be trained in the on-the-job training program, which was um, part of Toronto Office Skills Training Project. And Toronto Office Skills Training Project eventually morphed into Skills for Change. It was started to, to help the um, women to, to um, bridge that gap between just ESL and the language that they would need for work. So it trained them in language, uh, office procedures, computer, accounting, um, life skills was a big part of that, job search. When I came here, see a lot of program, they help disability with careers that fit them, that suit them. So that is the first time that I thought this is the op opportunity here that I can, can move on with my career that I choose later on. So that's how I started at Toronto Office Care Training Project. My first job was in Toronto General Hospital. I was very proud to be a clerk in pharmacy department, doing data entry control. I'm very, very proud of to be working as a um, Canadian at the time as well. Kim later transferred to the accounting department and took night courses at Ryerson to upgrade her skills. By the early 1990s, Kim felt her life in Canada was finally established. She was married, had plans to start a family, and was pursuing her accounting career. But life has a way of stopping us cold. In 1999, Kim's husband died in a tragic accident. Her courage and determination saw her through this dark period and gave her the opportunity to re-examine her life. Based on my experience as a volunteer at the temple, at other organization, and I know that I love the job that I do or volunteer job that I do, so I decided to quit my job um, and, and go back to Sheridan College as a social service worker. In 2004, Kim graduated at the top of her class. She now works full-time at the Vietnamese Association of Toronto as a program manager. My job is to helping the staff here, looking for funding, writing proposal, which I get a lot of help from my board directors. We helping clients here as a newcomers uh, come here as a, to settle new life in Canada. We also help people with family problems and um, and the elderly as well. It's all it's that part of my job, kind of different. I wear different hats here. Kim identifies needs in the community and gets involved. She's volunteered at several community service organizations, such as the Dixie Bloor Neighborhood Center and the Fap Van Buddhist Cultural Center. At the temple, Kim works closely with seniors and youth, organizing workshops, tutoring programs, and heritage language classes. Another facet of Kim is her love of music, which inspired her to learn to play the keyboard. I learned to play with my right hand and just one finger here during my, my husband, you know, the tragic time. That's that how I get away from my pain. So I, I play 
quite okay, quite good. Kim has really made a difference. She's made a difference to those of us who were lucky enough to work with her. She's certainly made a difference with the, what we call trainees in her program, and she is making a difference in her community now, and I think that's, she's, she's great. What I have right now is so useful to help others, so that I'm very, very proud of.